I'm Gabriel. I'm a support engineer at Cardo. Uh, so I'm part of the support team, which we are the ones that deal with clients, uh, deal with users, and actually support internally. Um, we help out with the platform. We develop for the platform. It's literally support all around. We go from very high technical uh, server um, you know, improvements to going into our UI and it's really full stack. So front end, back end, and when you're a Cardo user, you get contact with our team. So we can go as deep as you want or just learning how to use Builder overall. So it's literally everything. Uh, and you can just contact us if you have any issues or if you want to figure out how you want to use Cardo in some way, we can help you out with that. So again, full stack team. So you're not just, you can contact us and ask us all the technical questions you want. Uh, so for today's workshop, we're going to be analyzing user review scoring data for Airbnb listings in Los Angeles. And we're using Cardo for this. So we're going to go over a uh, different kind of analysis as we go all across this data set. And for these specific slides, you can come after and we can email you them. As you can see, there's two links there, the Airbnb data set that we're going to be using today. And plus, this whole example is documented on our website. So you, you can go step by step if you want to recreate it later. If, because I will be going a little bit just because of, you know, to show the full ability of Cardo, but you can recreate it yourself. And the data set's there, everything's there for you. Uh, so let's get started. Um, so, and very quickly uh, about what approach we're gonna take for this. We are gonna be using H3 for this. So for some people that don't know H3, H3 is our hexagon geomes that are basically a nice way to get um, in uh, like, and data analysis on like points that are overlapping over each other within a specific area. So they're like uh, basically like quad keys, if you understand quad keys, uh, but we're going to be using H3 in these examples. Uh, and we will see because Airbnb listing data is really all over the place. They're right on top of each other, there's a lot of density there. So we're going to use H3 to help us understand this data. And then specifically, we're going to be using our analytics toolbox for this. So besides just providing a UI, we actually provide uh, analysis functions that are easily able you to create H3 geomes, quad keys, all these integrated into your data. And uh, so, so enough of me talking about this, and let's get started. Uh, so when you create a Cardo account, this is the first thing you see. This is the home screen. Uh, you see all your recent maps. You see what's happening in the platform. And then on the, on the left, you get the home screen. Uh, maps, data explorer, data observatory, connections, applications, and settings. So to start, we're just going to go to our data explorer. Our data explorer is where all your data is going to be housed. So this includes, uh, in every single Cardo account, we have a Cardo data warehouse. This is a cloud data service that we provide for free for every single account. Uh, if you go in inside of here, you see that you can have your data in here, it's being shared, and then you have demo data, which is if you've seen our examples like these, all the data would be in here. So we, you have it for you automatically. And then the other thing we have is actually a BigQuery connection. And this is actually from an external cloud service provider. So you can easily uh, get a cloud service provider plugged in right into Cardo and be able to look inside, look inside the table, and look inside all the data sets within, which specifically we're going to be using this Cardo Academy and this project and these data sets in here. But how, how do you create a connection? So it's as easy as going into, we're going to go to, on the left side, our connections tab, clicking connections. And this is where all our connections for Cloud Data Warehouse are held. So right here, we have our BigQuery connection. And create a connection is easy as clicking this button, new connection. We have the five cloud data providers we have available right now, BigQuery, Databricks, Postgres, Redshift, Snowflake. Uh, today, we're going to do a BigQuery one. So we're going to click BigQuery, and we have two options, a service account or a sign in Google. So for a service account, for all of you that don't know, it's an easy uh, credential, JSON, that is available for BigQuery. So you can uh, generate this JSON credentials and uh, connect your BigQuery project that way. Or you can use the Google sign in for that BigQuery project. So we're going to use the sign in. And then right away, we're going to be using my Cardo account that's connected to my BigQuery connection. I'm going to name it, which I'm going to name it Test Connection. And then deciding what project that all my query uh, that I'm going to be using Cardo is going to be um, added to. So I'm going to put this 
project right here, and then just put connect. And as easy as that, I made a connection to my BigQuery data service. And so to be able to see what's in this, uh, what's in my project for BigQuery, I just go back to my data explorer, because remember, this is where all my data is held and where I can look at it. It's right here, my test connection. I drop down, and I see all my projects in here that's connected to it. So as easy as that, we just had a data connection. You can do this for Redshift, all the providers that we saw. Uh, besides just seeing the, seeing the data, we can actually import data into those connections themselves. So if you go here into our import button, you can import through your local file or through a URL. Uh, and we also provide auto-guessing. Auto-guessing is that when you import data, we actually are able to get the column types and, and guess like if you have a date time column, you can make it into a date time instead of a string. So we're, we try to get as much information from the data as possible and make the schema for it. Uh, so for this example, we're gonna be using a URL right here. And then we're gonna go back to our slides and go to that Airbnb data set right here, copy it, go back to the workspace and just copy and paste it into here and just put continue. So right here, we're gonna name this data set. We're gonna call it Airbnb listings. And then when you click here, you actually see all of your connections. So here's our test connection. Here's the workshop connection we we're gonna use for this example and our Cardo data warehouse. So let's use the workshop connection. And right here, we're gonna put it into the same project that we are gonna be using. So we go here, we go, to, we have our listings here, and then we're gonna say in this folder, put in this data set that I took from a URL. We put save here, and you get a summary of what you want to do, and we put import. And as this imports, you can just minimize this right now, and you can see that this is working. This is getting imported up here. You can continue to use Cardo while you import stuff, so it's e as easy as that. And we're actually importing this into a BigQuery project, not within a Cardo data warehouse, but in your connection when you make it. And so when you open this up, it's been imported correctly, and you were able to see the Airbnb, list, Airbnb listing data set right here. And so if you go to your BigQuery uh, project, you're able to see the same exact data set. We just provide you a nice UI to be able to look at it. Uh, so this is a data preview of this table. You can do this for any of the per, any data set that you got imported into your connections. So first that we get a map, a very, very simple map just to get a general idea of the data set we're gonna be dealing with. So this is Los Angeles, and these are the, all the Airbnbs. You get the number of rows within this table, and you get the table size as well. And then in data preview, you actually get the rows. And you can see the auto guessing coming into here. You can see if the right column type was added to your row, or you know, maybe turn off auto guessing off if you, know, you don't see it done correctly. Uh, but you can see here, we correctly put all these as numbers, which they are. And then we have a geome column right here, which correctly identify. So let's create a map. Um, so for this example, we're gonna be using the exact same data set, just named a little different, but it's exactly the same one. And creating a, creating a map is as simple as clicking on this top right button, create a map. And this opens up to our Cardo Builder. The Cardo Builder, oh, my browser just crashed. Sorry about that. I will, one second. Uh, let me just connect really quickly. Sorry about that. Mm 
And while I talk, uh, while I got this set up, uh, Cole, can you help and explain a little bit about Carta while I Yeah, so Carta basically uh, take data, we analyze that data, and uh, we're able to take uh, your data and mix it with our data. Um, we've got over 10,000 data sets, um, but you can now take your data and, uh, and then use what we have to then create these maps. Um, a lot of companies are coming to us, um, like a logistics company right now, uh, in terms of prices, so they're coming to us for like about optimization and um, how they can save time and money, um, you know, during their trip and, and how they're able to, uh, because of the shortages with uh, the drivers as well, or they're able to cut out uh, certain routes and just have the one truck um, taking the time and going through every route to make it, uh, you know, optimize time and money. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Got it. Yep. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> Mozilla on this time. <laughs> Um, so again, we're, at, we're in the data set, uh, and let's create a map. Simple as create a map, click this button, and it leads us to our Cardo Builder, which it's, Mozilla is not cooperating right now. Uh, you know what, let's just use Brave. Yeah, Mozilla is one second. Uh, it seems Mozilla is just crashing on me for some reason. Uh, Firefox is crashing on me for some reason. I don't know why. Um, um, but as Cole was saying, um, we try to be the the spatial um, the spatial toolbox for a lot of our customers. This includes building a UI where you can easily create maps, but also on a deeper level where you're able to create like backend a lot of functions for backend work uh, to create uh, like models uh, spatial models for this. Uh, Second. There we go. There we go. Let me get this back. Let's try this again. back and let's create this map again. The internet is going out for me. Mm. One second, can Cole, can, while I look into this, can you come up here and just talk about it a bit more? Thank you. Sorry about this, everyone. Uh, Um, actually, so actually when we do this, we actually prepared a video of this demo so we can show that as I debug it and then midway through, I can just go in and start, you know, like continuing it with it and then we can explain as we go through really quickly. So we'll do that as a, as a fix for now. Um, yeah, we'll do that for now. So for this, we're going to use our cut. Mm -hmm. 
imported it to be this one right here. We click on it, and as you can. Okay. So we're right back where we started. Uh, we imported the data set right now. Uh, we clicked it, we went to the preview of it, and we're showing the data preview. And get this part. And then right here, uh, we're creating our map. Uh, so the map gets generated pretty quickly. You can see that our data set is within the map. Uh, it's easy as that. We displayed it right away, and you can hover through and see what's in each individual point. And you can zoom in. It's a working map. And to be honest with you, as is, it already is a working map. You can post it anywhere. Uh, but, but the reason why we want to actually make this into an H3 geome is because as we zoom in, you see how these points are right on top of each other, and we don't get a lot of insight into this. So for example, if they have like pricing averages, or you know, they have different pricing around these points, um, we don't really, we can't really see it that well uh, because there could be like a low price Airbnb listing in one place and a very high one. We want to get a general idea of the area around this point. Uh, so for this part, we're, this is why we're going to create H3 genomes for this. Uh, we go around, we see the pricing of each one of them, the location of the audio right in the middle. So for this, we're going to go to our add sources. This is where you can create all your source information from, from it. And then you can import your tables or your tile sets, whatever you want, within your data connection. You can see here in other connections. But to create H3 genomes, we actually are going to run a query. We're actually going to do a SQL query from this. We're going to do our custom query SQL. And again, pick the right connection that you want to do this with within the data sets. We're picking what connection for this. And then type your own query right here. And then add source. So this takes us to our SQL editor. So again, you can write SQL like you would do in BigQuery, but you can do it within Cardo. And you can actually import data into the map using that. So we're going back to our slides and then taking this SQL right here. We're going to break this SQL down a bit in case you know some people off the bat will know that this is a pretty dense SQL query. Uh, but the key for this one is this function right here. This is a specialized uh, SQL function that within Cardo we created to easily create H3 geons. So we go back to our SQL editor, we put full screen so you can display the whole thing, and then we're going to be running this SQL here. And you can see here, the SQL, just like the query, it checks if a, if a query is run correctly, it got run correctly in the time about it. So we're breaking down the SQL a bit. So this is the table we're importing in, uh, we're importing from, and then we're saying, hey, for every single one of the Airbnb listings, we're using this function here and find an H3 ID for this table. So, um, and we're saying the, the Zoom level of this as well. So then we're making this into this table, H3 Airbnb table. Um, the thing to keep in mind with this part is that since we're finding for every single point of Airbnb and we're finding an H3 ID, uh, we're going to get duplicates, right? Because then multiple points are going to be in an H3 ID. So that's not very useful to us uh, because then genes are going to be right on top of each other. So that's what we're actually doing in H3 Airbnb and in aggregates. This, is, this part is not the aggregate of them. So we're saying take this duplicate H3 ID we're doing a group by to get the unique H3 ID, but then we're getting the averages of the pricing, of the overall rating, the value versus price rating, point limits rating, and location rating here. And then we're removing every H3 ID that is less than three points in it, because that's not really relevant to our analysis. That's really something to look for. So you can see here, we're getting overall rating, and we're rounding it out. So that's the second part of this. And then we're actually adding an extra column here too, because we want to get some information about this H3 geo. We want to say how many points are within that geo, right? Because we care about that. If maybe one point in one H3 geo has like five Airbnb listings and one has 200, right? That's a very hard, large distinction between the two. And then finally, now that we have this aggregate, we actually need to get geos from it. We've only been talking about IDs. So this last part is this function right here, which again is part of our Cardo Analytics toolbox. We're taking those H3 IDs, 
and they were actually converting them into geodes. So again, like our annex toolbox is not just part of the UI, but it's part of the Cardo infrastructure. We try to help out as much as we can. And so from this part, we run it, and as quickly as that, we have our H3 geodes right in the map, as you can see here. And as we, we float around, we see the average pricing of each one of them. And so now let's get some more information about the H3 geos. Uh, so, and let's organize a bit, this a little bit more because as you can see here, we have our layers uh, and we're gonna rename them to just make it a little bit friendlier. So as quickly as that layers, you can just rename them to organize your layers so you don't have to really like get jumbled on which layers you want to use. So you use Airbnb listings, which is these points right here and then the B one, which is our H3 geom, we're going to call it H3 geom. And then let's move the area and listings right above. You can just dr click, drag, and drop right above the H3 geom, as we saw here. And let's remove them for now. We'll just focus on styling these H3. So we click on that button, which is style options. And as you can see, is there is we want to focus on price for this for this first uh, map. So we, we see that the pricing of the averages of them. So you click on sale color. As you can see, all the, the different variations of pricing. And we put color and we put color based on. So for this, we can pick a column within your table to base the color on to see, show the variations of them. So again, because we're using pricing, we're going to pick pricing for this. Right there. And as quickly as that, you can see the variations of pricing across this data set. But what does they actually mean? So we actually have a legend at the bottom right that we just click, and we can see the variations between them. You can see that the yellow one is the most expensive of the Airbnb listings, while the dark ones are not so much. Uh, with this in mind, though, uh, we want to like better stylize, stylize this, because usually red means a little bit more <coughs> of, and then yellow means less of. So then we click on the palette, we're gonna add a little more steps to them, so it includes more variation between them, and then change the palette of them as quickly as that. And so you can see the red ones now are the most expensive area of listings, and then legend automatically changes for that use case. And let's remove this stroke for now just to make it a little bit cleaner, this map. There you go. Yeah, that's uh, but one thing to keep in mind while we, we did this is that uh, not all these jails colors, we, we are not really seeing the variation between the two, as was mentioned before. So these three, these two genomes uh, have the same color, but they might be representative of different listings, right? So how do we capture that? Because we know that each one of these are representative of a lot of listings or very little listings. So let's take it a little bit further and uh, actually display this within the map so people know about these variations between these two data sets. And we're gonna be using height for this. So we toggle height, and then we've made our geo into a 3D geo map, as you can see here. And then to actually see this a little bit better, we go to map view, we go to 3D view here, and you can see all the geos in a 3D view now as quickly as that. But as you can see, they're all the same height. So that's not really useful to us. Uh, right now. So again, similar to fill color, you go to more options, you go to height base, and then we're gonna uh, we're gonna choose the column that we chose before, which is total listings, which is the total listings within that H3 geo. So we click on that, and you can see now the height, uh, the higher the geo, the more, the more listings that there are within them. But there's still, you can't really see the variation. Like you can see a bit of them, but you don't see that much. So you can actually uh, configure this by the height. The height is what's the maximum allowed height within those geomes. So if we increase the height, we can, you can see those variations a lot more, as you see here. And then we can uh, left click to go scroll around this 3D image to better see the Los Angeles area. And it's a good reason we did that, because as you can see, these are the same colors, but this has not that many listings in it, while this one has a lot. So we're capturing this, uh, this missing part of this data set, and very easily for someone to see as quickly as that you're able to make a 3D map using H3. 
And again, here with the lesser of things. So we can see like there's way more density within these pockets than we would otherwise be. Okay, so that takes care of our first analysis. Uh, let's rename it as quickly as that. You can go to the top of our builder and we're renaming the map right now. There's going to be pricing analysis right there. Uh, so let's take it a little bit further though. Let's, you know, this is one of our maps. So we're going to duplicate this map. It's easy as three dots up there. Duplicate map. And then it'll start up another Cardo Builder. And with exactly the same thing as before, our two sources are up here. Our layers are up here. Uh, and just the name is different. We just say copy of and the name up top. But everything else should be exactly the same. We left exactly where we left off. And then we're going to actually focus on location rating now instead of pricing. So we're removing the 3D because this is another new analysis. We're changing, we're removing the height. And then we're also removing the fill color. Because remember, we, we config this for pricing. So now we're going to config it for location rating. So location rating is how great have people rated this Airbnb list. So as we look around, it kind of changed a bit. You can see that there is some like pattern it's near the coast. As everyone knows, like everyone wants to be near the beach. So there is some variation between that. But there's some that are not so much. But there is some, there is some uh, small analysis we can make from this. Um, so with this in mind, we want to know maybe how is location rating affected by rating, right? Because it's maybe it's not all location that we base this on. Um, but it might be other factors that are part of that rating, overall rating. Because it might be a location, but that's, we don't see that all the time, though. That this is happening. So in this, so we're going to be using a, a model. Uh, so th this is the first one. So we're going to be using an advanced statistical model on this data set. So we're going to be using specifically graphically weighted regression. Uh, we wrote a whole blog post about this one. It's basically able to show influences between points that are near each other. Um, but again, uh, this is a very overview of this model. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to go into it very much, but definitely check out the blog post. We break it down as much as we can. And again, the slides will be available to everyone. And specifically, we're going to integrate this model with this SQL query here. So exactly as we did before, we have a SQL query that you can we've configured and made, so you can easily be able to do it. Our current analytics toolbox is using this function. We're basically calling this table here, and we're saying, hey, what a how its overall rating affect these specific uh, columns? Value versus price rating, playlist rating, location rating, and then we're defining the H3 variance right here. As easy as that, you can run your model. As you see here, cleanliness rating. And I think the crucial part of this analysis we're doing right now is just the location rating, and we're going to compare the overall rating. So we're going to copy this squeak equal, and then go back to our Cardo Builder. And then from here, we're going to add source from. We're going to go again back to our custom query SQL, back to checking, make sure we're in the right connection where our data is. Clicking on it, type your own SQL, back to the SQL editor, full screen just to make sure we're getting the correct SQL in, putting it in. Checking that our SQL works up there, and then just running it. And right there, you see the data connection right there. And it's simple as that. We have our model run, as you can see here. So it should be right on top of the current H3 geom that we have because it's layer C up there. So we're just going to rename this just so we don't mix up these layers. So we do that, GW3, H3 GMS. So let's, let's look into this data set a bit more. So we go to three dots here. We actually can see the data instead of just displaying it. And we can see what we actually created from this model. So we see the H3 IDs here. But we also see the relationship between each of these columns and the overall rating. So the higher the relation, the more closely that they're, they're connected together. So maybe in an area that has a very high overall rating, 
maybe it's because it's location based instead of cleanliness, and in other places it's more cleanliness. So each of these columns represent that relationship. And for all the data scientists out there, like here is the actual like uh, you could configure it so it maybe is more accurate or less accurate depending on that. So in that column is more. So with this in mind, again, we're focusing on location rating. This is what we want to analyze. So we go to the same palette, style it, and we're going to say location rating based on this rating. We're going to set the steps again. And we're going to pick the palette as we did before. So to break it down, if the red ones, they're, they're more related to location. So if we zoom in, you can see if you're using the legend, which is in the top one right here, this has way more relationship to the, to the ones that have negatives. They have no relationship at all to the locations of it at all. Uh, but we still have a problem right now. Uh, we have two H3 geomes right on top of each other, right? That's not very helpful in our analysis because we have this model and we have the current H3 geomes here. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to see the difference between these two ones. Because one, we have how high the location rating, and the other one is the relationship between the two. Uh, so let's uh, get these analysis going by quickly doing a split view. So in this split view, you can see here, you can split the maps by layers. So in one, we're going to take our H3 genome here. You can turn it off. We're going to turn off our GW3 analysis model from here, turn it off. And so right now, our H3 genomes are here. And then we go to the, this one again, we turn off our H3 genomes. So here's our model. There's our H3 genomes. And in split view, if you move the map, both maps get moved at the same time. And if you zoom in and you highlight certain geomes, you actually be able to, they both get highlighted in both of these maps. So as you can see here, they get highlighted and moved over here as well. So let's focus in on one of these to see how we how this analysis will help us figure out some get some more insight from this data set. So let's pick the highest rating on location. So it would be right there in the red. And you can see these were rated very highly. Um, yeah, let's focus on this one. And we can see that this one has some relationship. The overall rating has some relationship with the location. As easy as that. So you can compare the two together, like this one and this one. It, this is very location based why it's rated so highly. And we use that using our model. And you can keep going around like this one has not a lesser rating, uh, but uh, the lesser rating, but it is partly location based why it's rated. So on the opposite side of things, maybe the location of this area of existence aren't that great, even though they're really close to each other. So that's something to look into another way that we are able to get more, like extract more analysis from this. So from here, let's take it up of even another level. Uh, we're going to be enriching this data set with some of our data sets from the data catalog. So we removed the split view. We removed our model for now. And we're just keeping our H3 genomes for now. And then from here, we're going to go to our data catalog. We go back to our workspace, and then right there, we're going to go to the data observatory, which allows us that has our spatial data catalog. And this catalog has premium data sets, public data sets from all different providers. We provide from transportation, and you can get it immediately uh, in, in with, with your account, and then you're able to put them into your map very easily. Uh, so for our particular example, which we want to take this data set and put it into our map, uh, we're, we're going to look for something within the United States because Los Angeles is in the United States and something that has maybe uh, urbanity or um, population density and some tourism. So we're going to pick the United States. We're going to use public data so you can easily access this. And then we use Cardo as a provider. And then from here, we're going to look at what we have, which right here, luckily, we have spatial features. 
for H3 resolution, which is exactly what we're doing. H3, and we're having H3 data set here. Uh, so let's click on it. And when you click on it, you get a preview of the data set, and it tells you what key variables exist within here. So it breaks it down for you so you don't have to look for all the key data sets or the specific columns you want. And when you click on the data, you actually get to see a preview of the data and how it looks and what are the columns for it. Using the first 10 rows, you can clearly see them. And then subscription is as easy as just clicking this button. You just click subscription, you agree to the license that you're, you're used to this, confirm this is subscription. And again, keep this in mind, we're going right back to our data explorer because I want to enunciate that, like we really tried to make it as easy as possible in data explorer where all your data is going to be. So if you ever have an idea, data explorer, you have a new tab, data observatory, and then subscription, and then spatial features are going to be right there in your subscriptions. And if you subscribe to multiple ones, it'll be right there. So we have our data now in our file. We can access it by clicking on the top right. You can actually get the SQL and get this data set. So if you use a custom query, you can actually get a data set there. Uh, but this data set is actually humongous. It's the whole of the United States with H3. So we're actually going to create tile sets for this. So for anyone that doesn't know about tile sets, uh, tile sets is a, instead of just using a normal table, a tile set it allows you to display at a very high performance level, uh, large data sets. And so creating tile sets is very easy in Cardo. You just click this, create, and then you can create a map, but the table's humongous, it's the whole United States. You just click a button and you can create a tile set just like that. And so exactly similar to our import process, you can name the data set, you can put this into your connection, again, because of our cloud native features, you can, if you don't want to work with Encarta or you want to do some analysis for it, you can just put it into your cloud data warehouse just to create this data set. We're going to put it in this project here, and then we're going to name it. And then we're going to save it in there. And as I said before, for tile sets, uh, the reason why they're so efficient is because of zoom levels. So what they do is they display features at a zoom level base. So right here, we're setting that zoom level. So anything above this, it won't get displayed by a certain zoom levels. And you can also see the SQL query again, because this is what we're doing on our side. And if you really want to, you can configure it yourself. But again, the UI can do that for you. So for this example, we're going to be using the UI just to make it easier for everyone. that and then let's set the zoom level we're going to set it so 12 is the maximum of the zoom level and then we're going to we're going to set it to seven and then from here uh we're picking what columns we want to use for this top set so we have a search bar we're going to be picking tourism because this will affect the location rating of the Airbnb listings we're going to pick urbanity like where it is, maybe it's a rural high dense area, and then the po total population within this uh, within this uh, the area of the Airbnb listing. So there might be more people there that might affect the rating. So again, we get a preview of where this is going to get headed, and we just click create. And then just like up here, you can continue using Cardo while this gets created into the background. You can see here, you click the top, like it does here, and you see that it's getting worked in the background. So while that gets created, actually we already have it pre-created for us, so we don't have to wait anymore for this. You can just click on the tile set, and this looks a little bit different from the normal data table that we saw before in the data preview. You can see that we have a sample data set up here, and then we have exactly the zoom level that we've set for this specific tile set, and the count of the total amount of features are in this tile set and more metadata, in case you want to see like if you created it properly or if you want to just recreate it yourself for different, for different purposes, so you can distinguish between them. So we have our tile set in our data set, right? So let's actually put it into the map we're working on. Right? We, we did all this way, so let's actually use it. So easy again, add source from. And instead of custom query this time, because we already have the data set available to us, we're just gonna put table and tile set, go to our connection we're going to be using for this, and then going into and getting our top set, <coughs> where we're going to the project. 
right there. There's a file type. And then adding the source. And as quick as that, we can see that we have, if we scroll to the bottom, we have the new source from there, and we have a new layer. But we can't see our tile sets, right? Because we mentioned that it's by zoom level, right? So we have to zoom in into the area that we're working with to actually see the tile sets we configured. So you can see the zoom level by going to the zoom column here. We see we're at zoom level four, level five. Uh, we'll keep zooming it in. And even though we can't see it, the tile set is for the whole of the United States. That's why it zoomed all the way out, because that's what it's showing. So we keep zooming in. One more. And you can see it got generated here, like tile sets are getting generated. And you see the whole tile set, as you saw before. So at eight, we're able to finally get the tile set to show up. See, and right here, you can see the tile sets are getting generated just to make sure that you know that they're getting generated in this way. So let's look into this into this a little bit more. So again, more options, layer styling. Oh wait, but yes, first we have to rename it just to make sure that our layers are we understand all our layers. And then let's style this just to get some understanding of this data set, right? Because we just imported it. So we're just going to do a color base and we're going to do population, uh, urbanity. And then you can see in Los Angeles with this data set, like, of course, in the core, it's very highly dense area, while out here, it's very rural. So it's similar to um, our normal table. We can just quickly make a map out of this from this data set alone to give you some idea of what's going on. So for this particular example, we're actually going to turn off the opacity because we're going to actually use this information and see the geomes from our original Airbnb listings to see maybe if something has a very high rating, maybe has a high, high uh, density, or it has a high population. So we just layered, and remember the tile sets are over over these geome IDs. So if we zoom in and we want to look into that specific uh, geome, we can see that there is a population of this many people or this, this is how dense it is, as you can see there. And tiles are getting rendered and you can see here. This is how we can get the specific geomes and get more input error get more understanding of why maybe that they're that way. As you can see here, high density, high density, maybe there's a bunch of POIs, uh, tourism points around there, maybe that explains why the location rating is really great. And then from here, we're going to take this even a, a step further, besides just showing it on the map. Uh, we're going to be using this data set to actually um, get some widgets, it's, which is another way to be able to interact with your data set. So again, we have our layer, but we also have our widget section, which right here we're going to make use our tile set, which is on layer D. We click on the layer. And then we have different types of widgets available for you. So we have formula, category, histogram, timetable and the table, uh, time series and the table. So for this one, let's do the total population within our map. So we're able to see how many people actually live within this area. So we're gonna click sum and we're gonna use the population. Just click that and you can see there our widget got formed with this amount of numbers in it. Let's rename it so people know that this is represent the total population. And then you see that it's a badly formatted population, as you can see there. That's not very user friendly, and that's not how we see population numbers. So we do have uh, formatting for this uh, down here. And let's choose uh, like this one, just to get a little more into the depth of it. So it's just a million, a lot more friendly formatted, so you understand the population. Mm -hmm. 
end really quickly because these widgets are interactive actually with your map. So if you move around your map, to it shows the total population that exists when the map goes. goes. So if you zoom out, it moves to the total population that's showing in the map, and you zoom all the way in to a specific area, it'll regenerate with the total population that it sees on the map. So it's like if you want to do some analysis for this, that's another way to do that with widgets. So let's create another widget. So we go back, we use our tau set data set again, and then we go to the sum again, but this time around, let's use POIs. Because uh, we want to see maybe um, if there's a lot of red, which are like better location rating in the geo, maybe it's because of POIs. Maybe there's just like it's a big tourism area. And so the location for people matter a lot. So we put tourism, and you can see here where it is a little red, there's 183 uh, POIs within that area, which maybe that's the relationship between the two. That's why the ratings are really high. Uh, so we change the tourism POIs, and if you scroll around, and very quick, you can see that it got changed into that. It dynamically changed as we scroll around this area. So you can see in this blue area, there's a lot less POIs. Maybe that's why people don't really care about location in this area. So let's go back, and then let's get another widget. And this time around, uh, we're going to be using a category widget instead this time. So we click, a, click on category here. And then we're going to be using our, um, this time around, we're going to focus on urbanity. So maybe there's a, we saw population, but maybe there's a relationship between, there's more insight you can get between not just a hyper dense area, but a medium dense area. So if you scroll around again, the map will actively change. You can see that they're broken down into different categories within the top set themselves. So like, you scroll around, you can see it changes based on uh, what's available in the map and what dense areas are there. As you can see there. And then finally, our final widget, uh, because We've, we've been doing a lot of things about the tile sets, but we actually want to see what Airbnb listings are actually on the map themselves. So again, we name our widgets so people know that it's a validity level. And then we're going to get our last widget, which is our table widget. Let me just fast forward to that really quickly. Right there. And instead of the tile set, we're going to be using Airbnb, the original Airbnb listings, to be able to see what is in there, and we're going to use the table widget for this. So the table widget actually shows you the, the points that are showing on the map, and specifically all the columns that we do, and you can configure the columns as well. So on the left, we don't care about Carter ID, we don't want to show this to a user, so we care about score locations, uh, price numbers, uh, so you can configure this uh, into here. As you can see here. So we care about reduced location and score rating and the price number, just in case people are interested in maybe there's a there's a difference in pricing within these listings. And also really quickly, you can also change the amount of rows that are shown when you see the map. So you can say like five or ten uh, really quickly. Eight as you see here. You can change it. And then more rows are here, but these are the, the ones that immediately are showing up. You can do them by the, uh, ordering by the price number if you just follow those columns here. Let's rename this. And these are the listings that we're seeing on the map themselves. Just because we don't want to just see the data that we enrich this data set with, we also want to see the Airbnb listings we're looking at. And so we move around. We see these data sets changing at the same time. So let's finally name our final map, because we've done two. 
two maps ready. Uh, this is our final map. Uh, we're going to put Airbnb location uh, reading analysis. And then it gets updated, and that's the name of our map. Um, so finally, let's actually share this map with the world, right? We, we, we spent a lot of time making it, and we spent all these widgets, so we want everyone to do it. Um, and just very quickly, as also on the side, besides just zooming in and out, you can actually use a lasso tool to actually like hone in on some areas. So if you click lasso, but you can also uh, polygons, rectangles, or circles, you click lasso. And you see here, you can like, you can draw the, around the point that you want. And you see here. We want to focus on this specific area. It'll filter it out right away. So, and it'll move all the widgets accordingly to that. As you can see here. So even if we scroll around, it doesn't matter because we're only focusing on that. And you can actually edit the map as well too. If you're not happy with it, you can edit it right away. So, and then you can just remove it and get back to your map as you had it before. So again, back to sharing, back to sharing this map. So it's easy as clicking the share button up there at the top right. And then you can just leave it as private. At default, every map is private uh, because you're working on it, but you can put it to the organization that you're working in. So if you, you, know, you have other users, you can share it with them. But for this, we're gonna put a public map you have the copy of the public share that we're copied here, but if we have iframes as well, if you want to put it on the website, you, off, you open a new link, and then we just copy it, that URL, and this will be available for anyone if you open it, and there's our map display, our widgets are there, and this is what users will see. As easy as that, we just shared a map and created a map for everyone to see. Yep, and that's our example. <laughs> um, and let me go back to the slides really quickly. Okay. Okay. And that's that's our that's the example. Does anyone have any questions about any of the things we went over? No uh, okay. <laughs> uh, and really quickly, if you want to request a demo or anything, uh, definitely uh, reach out. Uh, we, we definitely want to learn your use cases, and we'll be able to figure out what's the best way to do it. And then again, we really, uh, really recommend uh, creating a free trial account. It's free, and you can just try out the platform, and it comes with a cargo data warehouse ready for you to use. So if we find it really helpful. And if you want these slides, please reach out to Cole. And you go get your email, we'll forward that all to you so you can create this example whenever you want to and get more, more understanding of what you need. Sounds great? Great, thank you so much, guys.